Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon, founder and creator of KaramMD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today we're gonna to talk about a question that comes up over and over again, actually for my entire career, and I'm sure this is a point of curiosity for you as well, but it's also one that's gonna help you understand what you need to do for yourself given certain anatomic changes related to your face and neck. And the question is this, should I get a neck lift done without a facelift or a facelift done without a neck lift? Two sides of the same coin and I'm gonna answer that this way. So first of all, let's understand the anatomy because unless you understand the anatomy, there's no way you will fully accept the answers that I'm about to give you. But once you understand the anatomy, it'll make beautiful sense, perfect sense, and as a result, you will be able to answer those questions for yourself, but also help guide your surgeons who may be telling you to do one or the other or you know, some variation in between. So here's how it goes. Anatomically, and this is a point that not every surgeon completely appreciates and really understands. Anatomically, your face and your neck are literally one thing, and I'll explain why that is. There is a muscle that is responsible for the looseness and the deformity of an aging neck, and that muscle is called the platysma. The platysma muscle attaches, it inserts in the clavicle region, it goes up, and it's a thin, wispy muscle, and it goes up all the way and attaches to the fascia in the middle of your cheek. Okay, so this is important. Bone down here, fascia up here. When you're young, that platysma muscle is firmly held against the contours of your jawline and neck simply because it is being held upward. As we age, and you probably have heard me say this before in other videos as well, but as we age, the fascia in our face, typically somewhere around our late 40s, early 50s, starts to descend, right? It starts to descend at the level of the temporal region. As a result, the mid face doesn't have anything to hold it up anymore, and the jawline starts to sag, and when the jawline starts to sag, guess what? There's nothing to hold the neck up anymore. So the end result of all of this is a brow region that starts to get a little heavy, mid face that starts to get heavy and deepening of the nasolabial fold, the jawline starts to get heavy and forming jowls, and the neck starts to sag. And as a result of that, all of a sudden, you've got aging of the lower half of the face. You, as a person who's going through it, you may be just noticing your neck and saying, hey, I wanna get my neck taken care of. I wanna go in for a neck lift because I hate the way it sags. And believe me, there's a ton of procedures that are designed to be just neck lifts. But the problem, the fundamental problem in that is that if you go directly under the neck or back behind the ear and do something directly to this area, well, guess what? There's nothing holding your neck up because the neck is starting to come down because that's what aging is, is a descending process of the entire fascia. And because it starts to descend, well, guess what? In a short period of time, your neck is gonna to start to sag again. You're also not gonna get a, content, a beautiful harmony between your jawline and your neck because as the neck started to come down and you just treated the neck, you've got jowling still, you've got heavy nasolabial folds in this area, so your neck and your jawline are gonna look very different from one another and that is a, one of the reasons why people look so unnatural. It's like, wait a minute, why would you have a tight looking neck and a loose jawline and mid face? Because that doesn't happen in nature. You're either all lifted or you start to sag together. And so when you start to intervene that way, you start to run into trouble. So, as a general point, treatment of the loose neck requires a vertically oriented repositioning of the fascia to hold the neck up. And I want you to really appreciate and understand that aspect of that. Now, there's another set of changes that are happening to the neck, which are very important, and this will set up for the next question, um, and that is the, the tissues, the fat and the soft tissues in the neck are starting to get thicker as time goes on. Some of the muscles start to get thicker, the, the fat starts to accumulate under here. That's why you see people get this heaviness underneath the neck. So, back to the other side of the coin. Is it okay to get a facelift without a neck lift? Now, 
What's interesting about that is, believe it or not, depending on where somebody is on the continuum of aging, they might not really be bothered by the early laxity changes that are happening in the neck. And as a result, they, ju you know, they just say, all right, let's do a standard facelift. Now remember what a standard facelift is, is more or less a horizontally oriented facelift, meaning the face goes sideways, still not positioning the platysma upward. And as a result with time, the neck starts to continue to sag. So all of a sudden now you've got the other opposite problem. Your face is tight, your neck is loose. That doesn't look right and people don't like the way that looks. So for you as a consumer who really wants to look natural and also wants to address these aging changes, it's imperative in my opinion to address the face and the neck at the same time in literally every single case. And if you're early in either one of those changes, it's okay. I mean, either you decide to wait until you're bothered by it more, or if you're bothered by it enough at those early stages, then get on it, but do it the right way so that two, three, four, five years later, you're not dealing with this sort of disharmony and then having to go in for another operation. Because that's a real downer to have to, you know, go through all this and then have to go through it again, or just to be overall unhappy with the outcome. So that premise, that concept that I'm just explaining to you right now, is really the foundation of why I developed the Vertical Restore in the first place was because I realized in my previous uh, approaches, I would give patients the option of doing a facelift, a neck lift, a lateral brow lift, and it was just kind of like, why am I giving the patient the option when I know what's gonna look better for them? And now the Vertical Restore just automatically addresses the neck, the jawline, the midface, and the lateral brow all in one procedure so that there's this balance and harmony that exists in every single case. And those are the kind of outcomes that you all have seen and get excited when you when I share those before and afters and you think how you know significantly rejuvenated they look but how natural they look but also the durability is very important when you see people who are years later and they still have a balanced overall outcome. So bottom line, there's very special cases where somebody's younger and just has heaviness of their of their neck, you can do a neck lift alone. Also, if someone is a lot younger who has just laxity of this upper part of the face and you can just do um, a facelift only in our practice, we call it a vertical prevent. And the neck, we call it neck contouring for those younger patients. But for the average person who's going through the aging process, they need both done. So that's the rationale, that's the reason behind it. I hope that helps you. I hope that um, puts you in a position where you're empowered to guide your own ship and be able to tell your, your surgeons or inquire the right way about what it is you're looking for and hoping for and what the pros and cons are of doing these kind of mixed approaches. I know it's a common question. I hope there's not a lot of confusion around that, but in a simple way, just treat your face and neck together and you'll, you'll be good. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, follow along with me. I'm gonna be sharing tons of good questions and answers and, and uh, skin information and uh, patient journeys on this channel, which I think uh, you know will give you a lot of good information as you go forward in trying to ultimately look as young as you feel. If you haven't already, also um, hit like and comment and share this along with some friends and family to help them further get informed. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. Dr. Amir Karam.